Hello and welcome to the last working day of the year 2021 and it's time to bring you a feature on the show today. We're looking at the President, Muhammad Buhari, who is set to sign the 2022 appropriation bill in a few hours. Now, the 2022 budget has been transmitted by the National Assembly and the President will sign the bill into law by 10 a.m. this morning. This comes barely a week after lawmakers in the House of Representatives and Senate chambers of the National Assembly passed a budget of 17.12 trillion naira, increasing the benchmark price of crude from 57 to 62 dollars per barrel. Well, joining me now to discuss this and much more, I have Mukhtar Mohammed, the Chief Executive Officer of Finance with Mukhtar. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today and a Happy New Year in happy advance. Happy New Year, David. It's been it's quite an interesting, interesting year, year 2021. And it's great. I'm, I'm ending the year with you. Exactly. And a happy birthday ahead of tomorrow as well. Thank you. <laughs> it's really a fresh start if we put things in clear perspective. We are still trying to ensure that we have a budgetary cycle of January to December. Hence, we see this commitment. The president is signing at the very last minute of the last day of the year 2021. This is still coming with a little bit of mixed sentiment, especially with regards to our implementation markers. We're seeing this year's budget. Although we applied for, look towards the January to December cycle, we are having an extension till March. But how commendable is this move? Well, in terms of meeting the cycle, very commendable. Mm. But when you look, I think the government also was having their body language before now. They've said they want the extension of the, three of, of the previous budget, year mm. budget, by three months. So I thought um, that sh should come with um, a clever, not just signing it. Because we want to make it the tradition of signing it. But like you said, is mm. it implementable? That's what we should be looking at. When the government asked for three months, I thought they, they were like seeing ahead that mm. there could be issues, especially in some of those numbers that we've seen came, came from the National Assembly, mm. addition of project, increment in uh, oil benchmark. Mm. So, but, on, uh, but maybe the president wants to sign it to law and then we we'll see how it goes. Remember, we also have the uh, national census that was coming up in exactly. 2022. We have also have the election. Uh, I mean, that's coming up in 2023, but provision should be made in 2022. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are not in the budget, and that's why the lawmakers are saying that we are looking ahead of this, and we are now beginning making the provision, but I don't think it's right for them to do that. Mm. And then another big area we look at when we are talking about uh, the presidential assent and budget passage and a whole lot more is the area of deficits, uh, ballooning debt, and for... The business community, there are different schools of thought when it comes to the budget deficit we currently have as it now and our revenue generation strategies. Now, going into the year 2022, which is just barely a few hours more to go, in terms of thinking outside the box now, what alternatives do you think government has to look into? Let's commend taking a look at Infraco, for example, looking into the capital market to uh, fund infrastructure development. That was one of the ways you were pitching as well that we have to think a little more about re-strategizing. The approach just has to change. It's not business as usual. Definitely, David, you took it up. I mean, the approach just has to change. And again, we don't have, we don't have need for those hmm. um, budgets. I mean, especially in the area of infrastructure, infraco have come in. Why not you give a lead into public-private partnership? Then you as a government, you begin to build the enabling environment to make hmm. sure that this, uh, this project strive. Because as it stands now, we don't have the money. We go, this government is not ready to think out of the box. When you're thinking out of the box, like I've said it, like you said, you have to begin to see your project as an asset base because some of these projects are, are revenue generating projects. Why not you set that project, bring in the PPP, this way to a public private partnership? That is what is done all over the world. Mm -hmm. I keep saying if you look at the United States imp uh, uh, um, uh, um, infrastructure B that was passed by uh, President B. Sure. B um, um, uh, Biden, you realize that Biden is still talking about. PPP, public-private partnership. So we should do like that also. Instead of always just putting up project, keep on boring for infrastructure, keep on boring, keep on boring, adding more debt. I think it's time we Our do. government is also looking towards PPPs, but it's the how that's the biggest challenge here. You see, if you have the, if you have the well within, if you are looking into it, why not you sit down with the private sector? Look, um, David, the challenge with government is that government is just thinking revenue, revenue, revenue. Mm. And that's all they think about. And when they think revenue, they think of tax. When they think of tax, they think of 
taxing the private sector. So going back to do the PPP, they are looking at it as a dream towards their revenue. They are not even looking at the longer picture that is going to mm. build infrastructure. Mm. So that is a challenge. It's not that because government does, they, 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 are, they, are, they are held back or they don't think that the PP, uh, the pub, pub, uh, private sector will work with them. They are just scared that if we begin to work with the private sector, that means they will ask for tax bracket. They will ask, we will not be able to get the kind of revenue we want to get to. Remember, most of the revenue that the government is looking towards is to take care of recurrent expenditure and they don't want to look off that way because they've not had the political way to deal with the issue that has to do with the current expenditure. The cost of governance in Nigeria is relatively high and we just have to devise new ways and means of slashing this. That's one of the models we've seen being adopted and on the global front. Yeah. But talking about strategies that we've seen in terms of the global front now, we've had the issue around Omicron also throw another curveball, but that didn't take us off the track. In the case of uh, shocks, or curveballs expected for 2022. How do you expect governments also have cushions, buffers in place to ensure that we don't lose our balance? We're expecting crude oil price to be at about $70 per barrel come next year. That's the projection for the global front. But in case if it drops below $62 per barrel, in the worst case scenario, how do you see us playing? <sighs> It will be very difficult. That's why I'm not happy with the house not leaving the benchmark at fifty-seven dollars per barrel. dollars per barrel. Mm. I, I don't think it was a nice move. I think the government has foreseen it. There could be a challenge. A micro, a micro challenge has come in. Mm. But hopefully, we expect that according to World Health Organization that this year, 2022, we might see a total end to um, the pandemic. So mm. we could see if that comes in, then the price of oil will definitely remember that we need to look out. We need to look outside the box, and we need to begin to look at the non-oil sector. Mm. And if you got the report from the Bureau of Statistics. In the third quarter, the non-oil sector was doing a negative, and the, I, I mean the the oil sector was doing a negative, and the non-oil sector contributed. So I wish we could keep working on that sector, and not just in terms of productivity, in terms of job creation, also from that sector, in terms of using that sector as a springboard to caution any external ch uh, shock we get in the area of of of, 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 of uh, crude oil. But unfortunately. I keep saying it's your main revenue that I used to generate mm. other stream of revenue. So we still need the crude oil. We still want the price to be good, so, but we need to know how to manage it, especially in building other stream of income in the, in the non-oil sector. And what's your forecast as well for the year 2022? We are seeing the projection that we're going to see inflationary pressures moderate at about 13%. We are looking at the GDP growth rate, still a smaller margin compared to our population growth rate, even the working force as well. The rate of unemployed Insurance is growing much faster than the peg of what we have for the GDP. We are expecting new tariffs to come into bear for the year 2022. The world, uh, 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 global bodies are also crying out that any shift or change, an upward move of energy cost would also throw Nigerians off balance because we already have a whole lot of individuals coming down below the poverty line. It's a big mix and then we have the pre-election mood. David, David, governance is going to be for the next three months. <laughs> After three months, we go into an election and um, um, 2022 is going to be a big year for Nigeria. You talked about the tariff. We'll see the tariff come up in, in the power sector. We'll also see the removal of subsidy if everything goes yes. by plan. We'll also it's see... Tough year. It, we, 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 I mean, it, it's going to be a very, very, very challenging year for Nigeria. Hmm. Um, and, and, and like you say, GDP will come. All those are the... Boost, I mean... Um, We've seen that um, inflation may come down. Those are the positive that we look forward in the year. But the big point there, uh, David, one thing I want to see government do, I want to see stability in the exchange rate. I want to see where we begin to attract foreign direct investors. I want to see us attract portfolio investors. Mm. And with that, then we maintain stability. If we maintain stability, other issues in terms of bringing down inflation, in terms of dealing with oil subsidy, in terms of the removal of subsidy, in terms of power, will be stabilized. Because the challenge we have is that once these companies begin to, in the area of for for subsidy, once we begin to import and our uh, the exchange rate is on CBN cannot meet it, then you you continue to see those price goes up. Mm -hmm. In in the in, in 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 the power sector, once we stabilize some of the equipment that will be coming in, could be cheaper and those could also bring down. it would have, have the ripple effect. So, but for now, I think my major concern in 2021, I want, in 2022, I want to see stability in the exchange rate. We hope the entire economy also experiences some stability. Thank you very much for your time. On the breakfast show this morning, Mukhtar Mohammed. We keep our fingers crossed as to how things will play out come next year. That's just a few more hours to go. Happy New Year, David. <laughs> Happy New Year.